the overhand knot. This is the simplest of all knots. We make a crossing turn and then we push the working end through the crossing turn. And that's it. If this knot's placed under strain, it can be difficult to untie. If instead of pushing the working end through the crossing turn, you push a bite through, this is the slipped overhand knot. And because the bite is used instead of the working end, this can be tied in the middle of a piece of rope. And it can easily be undone by simply pulling on the working end. If, instead of pushing the working end through the crossing turn once, we push it through twice, once, twice, then this is the double overhand knot. And it makes the knot a little larger. Figure of eight knot. This is similar to the overhand knot, but it's a little bulkier and easier to untie. We make a crossing turn, and then instead of pushing the working end through the crossing turn, we cross one more time, and then push the working end through. And pull. And you can see where the figure of eight knot gets its name. There's a slipped version of the figure of eight knot. Instead of putting the working end through the crossing turn, you put a bite through. And there we are, the slipped figure of eight knot. And again, it can be undone by pulling on the working end. The stevedore knot. This knot is an extension of the figure of eight knot. If we use one crossing turn, you get an overhand knot. Two crossing turns, you get a figure of eight. Now put in two more. One, two. I push the working end through the crossing turn there. And pull tight. And there's the stevedore knot. A fairly distinctive shape. This is a bigger knot than the figure of eight and uh, bulkier and can still be fairly easily untied.